Hey everybody, it's Brion Davis coming at you with the first installment of a series that I'm putting together so that uh, I can reach people, I can connect with people, I can uh, support and influence you. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of questions out there um, on the different social media platforms and the various uh, platforms uh, for actors and I'm seeing a lot of similar questions that are popping up. There's a lot of people from across the country, across the globe, that are asking questions. Maybe uh, an acting class isn't um, available to you. Maybe you are in an acting class and you just wanna be uh, even that much further informed. Um, the first of this series is going to be a focus on just who you are, uh, a focus on understanding your truth, understanding that Everything that you're questioning, everything that you doubt, everything that you're wondering about is inside of you already. All those answers are right there with you. You have enough information in your life to acknowledge the fact that uh, your truth resonates from within. All right. So what happens in life is that society comes in and it starts to manufacture the way that you view the world right so when we're we're kids we're we're young we're under 5 we have this wild vivid imagination there's no um question or reserve to our ability to have an imagination so what i'd like to do is begin to uncover that for you uncover the fact that while we reside in a lot of doubt cast on us by society and, and our uh, self-doubt, our um, perspective of ourself begins to be um, paralyzed or petrified by the influences of society. Um, the doubt, the problems with money, the problems with, with being seen and not being seen, etc. So with that, I want to just connect with you and I just want to, I want to have you uh, take a moment, just take in a moment, um, take in a deep breath in through your nose and release. Take in a moment, take in another deep breath in through your nose, expanding your ribs and expanding your diaphragm. Take in another moment. Take in a deep breath. Oh, and release. Doing this allows you to find your presence, allows you to find a stillness. And I'm gonna ask that you take the next few moments of your life and completely connect with me here. Connect with me in this experience connect with me in um, the first of this series and i want you to just take a moment and ask yourself or remind yourself of three things that you're grateful for three things in your life that you're grateful for and they can be the breakfast that you had this morning the friendships that you have the roof over your head no matter where you are You can be grateful for your hands, your feet. So just take a few moments and think of three things that you're grateful for. Maybe even write those down. Take a moment and just write those down. So we're going to move on. If you haven't had a moment to fully uh, digest what you've just created, which is appreciation for where you are in your life, there's always something to be grateful for. You can pause the video and continue. So the truth is in you. What do I mean by that? I use a platform called Lava and uh, I'll have an actor sit in what I call the lava seat. Some uh, coaches call that the uh, hot seat, where I ask you a series of questions that are all answerable to the who you are, 
are all answerable to the person that you are right now. Everything in our life, all the choices we've made, every experience in our life has led us up to who we are right now. So lava, and the reason why I use the word lava is because that lava is the, the truth that exists inside your chest, right there at your core, right there at the center of your being. And that is your truth unpetrified by society. And with this truth, I want you to begin the process of recreating or creating your vision for 2020. I want you to create the vision for your five-year plan, your three-year plan, your one-year plan. So in that process, you are going to dive deep, and we're going to go into that a little bit further here in a second. You're going to dive deep, and you're going to be bold. You're going to be extremely bold with that vision. What is the greatest thing you can imagine? Because I'm telling you, whatever it is that you can imagine, I'm going to take you through a series of steps that are going to allow that to be true, but also something even greater. So the truth is in you. The truth is your core purpose. LAVA, it stands for learning. You're always learning. You're always aware. You're always uh, learning about the human condition. You're always absorbing books, absorbing knowledge. Where do we put our source? Where do we put our source of information? Are you on Facebook all the time? Are you kind of uh, overwhelmed with this, um, the news cycle of today? Or are you allowing yourself to read books like The Four Agreements or uh, books that are going to inspire you? Are you reading or listening to podcasts that are going to inspire you? Uh, School of Greatness is one of my favorite podcasts. So this truth within you, that is what I want to focus on. And that's what I'm going to help you discover today. So right over here, I'm going to move my face. I'm not sure if you guys can see that. I put it on my face right there. <laughs> that's funny. Um, whatever you are by nature, keep to it. Never desert your line of talent. Be what nature intended you for, and you will succeed. That is by the philosopher and author, uh, Sidney Smith. You can look him up um, as, you, as you desire. Now, this comes to mind. This was a quote that was given to me probably 20-something years ago uh, by a, a girl, and I don't remember her name, a girl in an acting class. She gave me a, a gift, and on that gift was this, uh, or in that gift was a quote, and this, this, uh, this came up. And I was recently reminded of this quote, whatever you are by nature, keep to it, never desert your line of talent, be what nature intended you for and you will succeed. That is your purpose. That is your truth. That exists right here at the core of your being. So, so sometimes we question that. Sometimes we get thrown into the commitments of making money or the commitments of, of what other people expect of us. And in that process, we lose sight of our truth. We lose sight of our truth. So learning is the first. Learning about yourself, learning about others, awareness. Having an awareness, having empathy for the world, that is going to be the second. Visualization, which is where we're going to be jumping into here pretty soon. And in the next series, we're going to be diving into awareness. But visualization is the next uh, part of this particular series. And then admittance. Now, that's going to be later. That's going to be much later because uh, having a great value and appreciation for yourself um, and awareness of self. Um, and a visualization of what you're committed to creating in the world are all elements that are going to allow you to address and admit who you are. And that is your past experience, admittance, admittance of all the good, all the bad, everything that you've done, um, getting rid of blame, of shame, of anything that kind of, kind of weighs you down uh, in being the person that you are. So that's admittance, like having the great admittance of everything that's happened to you in your life. All right. So there we are. Uh, this quote is a great reminder, great reminder for me. And I hope that you, for you, it is as well. Um, this pensive image over here is me in the Amazon jungle waiting for a shot in the film Embrace the Serpent. And that was one of many moments during that experience that I, I was able to 
sit and be present and be grateful for the life that I was creating for myself. Who am I? So if you're familiar with Uta Hagen, and if you're not, Challenge for the Actor is the book to get. If you're an actor, this is uh, one of the best books on uh, working with exercises, working with um, uh, developing a character and having a greater understanding and appreciation for the craft. Uta Hagen, Challenge for the Actor. So one of the first questions she asks in her six steps is, who am I? This who am I is so powerful. Now, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to create an awareness of you as the human that you are. And I'm going to create and, and I'm going to parallel that with who you are um, as an actor and uh, what the process is to develop a character and how similar those two things are. The who you are is the person that you wake up to. You're completely naked in your bed. You wake up. You're completely alone. You walk into the bathroom and you look in the mirror. You're nude. You're wait, you wake up in the morning before anything happens, before anybody um, comes into your life, your roommate, your mom, your dad, etc. This who you are is, is the full spectrum of all your life circumstances. This is who you are now and what you get to shift in terms of who you want to be. Who do you want to be? You, begin, you can begin to shift that dynamic right now by asking, who do you want to be? And that is asking yourself, what do I want to create in the world? And then who do you want to be to create that? Those are the two things you can control. You can control your visualization of what you want to create and then your way of being that is going to create that for you right? So if I want to create unity in the world, which is one of my big missions, I want to create global unity. Who do I get to be every day to make that possible? I get to be rigorous. I get, be, get to be connected. I get to be passionate. I get to be a leader. I get to be um, proactive. I get to be authentic. I get to have integrity, right? I get to be, to be with integrity. Um, and then the mechanisms that are going to allow that vision to become reality for you are going to be presented along the way so we don't get caught up in the, in the how-to, right? You get to write the script of your life. So right over here, you get to write the script of your life. And I'm going to go through kind of a process that's going to allow you to do that. Who do you get to be to create what you want in the world? Think for a moment. Who do you get to be in order for you to create what you want to create in the world? right? Uh, for me, some of my favorites are rigorous. I get to be loving. I get to be compassionate. Compassionate. I get to be enthusiastic. I get to be omnipresent. So omnipresent means I get to be everywhere. This is one right now, this mechanism, which is going to be this video up on YouTube is one of my ways of being omnipresent. I'm going to be available to the world in order to create unity, right? Um, and then you get to ask yourself other questions like how do other people see you? there's a lot of there's a lot of benefit to asking people how do you see me what are your opinions of me now we're treading into a little bit of uh, feedback so you get to have a strong awareness of yourself and so when you say to others people that are close to you how do you see me you want to engage in all of the feedback now, somebody might say, I think that you're great. Sorry, my nose is itching. You, you, you might think that, um, or someone might think of you as just this great leader, this great um, inspirational person. Somebody else, or even that person, might think of you as somebody that's not completely authentic, that you're not completely showing up in the world, that you're not fully engaged in your craft or whatever it is that you want to create in the world. That's honest feedback. That's great. So you can begin to shift how you're showing up in the world based on that feedback. Now, sometimes you're going to get feedback that is projection, and then you get to uh, analyze whether or not it's beneficial to you or not, or if that other person is, is giving you um, or is projecting, right? Now, you get to shift also how you want them to see you. So if somebody gives you feedback that is, um, you know, that is, you, you feel blocked. You seem really blocked. You seem really um, guarded against a lot of people or you don't seem trusting. You get to take on that feedback and you get to 
replace it with an exercise um, of a way of being that is going to begin to shift that way of uh, the way that other person sees you, right? You get to shift the way you're being in order to promote a better perspective from that person. Now, granted, you don't want to bend or shift or shape who you are for the benefit of other people. You want to shape and uh, create who you are for the purpose of serving humanity with integrity, with authenticity, okay? So just keep that in mind. And when you watch this video, if you have questions or need clarity on anything, please post those below um, in my YouTube feed and I will answer them. So you get to define you. You get to create the script and you get to define what it is that you wanna create in the world. That's so exciting, there's so much control. Um, on, on that. You get to visualize who you want to be and you get to every day work toward becoming that and being that. Who do you get to be in the daily so that you get to uh, become what you want to be, okay? If you're an actor or an artist, let the industry define you, right? So, so I had an actor um, tell me the other day that uh, she was cast as a ethereal being. Now this actor, she's new to the industry and she got, she created a vision board or she's creating a vision board. And one of the things that she wanted to create in the next year was to, um, was to be on film sets. Like she wanted some supporting roles. Well, she booked a, a film pretty quickly. And she was cast a non-speaking role, but this ethereal being. And she in her, of herself, she in and of her herself is a very androgynous person. So I knew going into working with her that she was going to get those kinds of roles, right? Ethereal, spiritual, um, androgynous. Um, so the industry came to her and said, we're going to cast you as this ethereal being right? That's a way for her to show up and say, hey, this is how I'm being seen. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign on the dotted line for that. For me, I've gotten cast a lot of um, very intense brooding roles, some racist rednecks, some uh, I've played my share of neo-Nazis, I've played my share of bad guys, and I love that. I love being able to play those off-color characters, those characters that, are, that can exist outside of um, outside of the society's norm, right? I get to play beyond the box, which really excites me. The industry showed me that. In my early 30s, I was presented with multiple roles that were the bad guys, the villains, and I got really excited about that. But I didn't know that leading up to until I got cast in those roles. My eyes, um, my intensity, this uh, organic nature of brooding that, that kind of comes across believe it or not. Um, and those are the things that I get cast as. So, so let the industry define, uh, define you and you keep working at who you want to become. So when you're creating your vision and you're creating what I recommend is a vision board, because believe me, it works. You want to incorporate eight categories. These eight categories are environment, education, spirituality, significant other. Why is that important? Your significant other can be your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your um, it can also be your best friend. It can be your mom. It can be your dad. It can be your significant other as a person in your life that is, has your back. Um, and we all want that. We all want that companion in our lives. Um, your career, finances, health, relationships. Now, right here in the center, um, and I think you can find this graph online. I don't know if I created this or if I stole it offline, but um, these are the eight categories that I've enlisted as the major eight categories for a holistic, well-rounded life. Environment, finances, spirituality, career, family, relationships, significant other, and health. So um, look at those and right over here, uh, environment, education, spirituality, significant other, career, finances, health, and relationships. That is the categories of your life that you get to focus on. Um, by asking yourself, what do you want? What are you committed to creating in the world? And then bring out your journal and spend 
time being very specific with each one of those categories. For example, um, giving yourself you time and having the courage to be really bold in your vision, right? So for example, your environment, how do you want your environment to feel? What do you need in your environment to feel supportive? Is there anything in your environment that is not elevating you? Then you get to have a conversation with that element in your environment, whether it be a roommate, whether it be a significant other, a, parent, a parental figure, et cetera. You get to have a conversation with them and say, hey, this is what I need in order for me to be elevated. And if that person doesn't respond to that uh, with loving, uh, desire for, for your elevation, then you get to begin to remove that element from your life. Uh, clutter in your environment. Um, now, I, I will be the first to admit that I can be very creative and very cluttered. I have piles of paper. I have books thrown everywhere. I'm always reading multiple things. And um, I, get to, I get to shift that. I get to work on creating a clean environment for myself. Um, your health, are you, are you committed to creating a healthy life for yourself? Um, that's going to the gym, that's eating right, etc. Ask yourself, what do you need in each one of these categories? And then begin to process a life that is needless. And what do I mean by a needless life? If I am surrounding my, if I have a desire to create something in the world, which for me is unity, which for me is um, a variety of different other things. Um, if what I want to create in the world, and that is my commitment and that is my vision, then everything in my life gets to be supportive of that, right? So relationships, people in my life, my environment, my education, how am I educating myself on a daily basis? So that you get to the point where you don't need anything in order for you to be elevated, okay? If you have a question on that, please feel free to ask down at the bottom line. Now this gets really exciting, write your own script, utilize the aforementioned categories, get out your journal and start creating from the present POV. This is very important to write as if it's already happened. Um, the reason why I have this image, this is me in Embrace the Serpent, and um, I am on the Vops River here. And um, in 2007, I created a vision board. I was very specific with what I wanted in my life. And in that vision board, <clears throat> I said that I wanted to travel the world. I wanted to do a foreign film, literally. And I wanted to be a part of um, working with indigenous cultures. I also had on my vision board that I would be at the Oscars by 2015. And um, by 2016, I was at the Oscars, having shot this film in the Colombian Amazon with indigenous cultures in multiple languages. Uh, extraordinary experience in my life. The mechanisms, had no idea how I was gonna get to it. Had no idea that that happened. And then I got to travel the world with the film. Um, and now I get to be um, I, I've been a, a guest star role on multiple shows. I've done theater. I've done, um, uh, I was on uh, a variety of different shows and I, I, I've done, I've directed theater and I, I've had this life that I've created for myself of what I want it to be. I've created the script of my, li my life. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. And the challenges that I've had have been very instrumental in really locking in on what it is that is valuable to me, what it is that is that is very important to me. For example, the last year or so, I devoted a lot of attention, uh, attention to teaching. And while I love that, um, I also feel like that I, I can provide a service in giving back and mentorship, which is exciting. I also feel like I do a great service as an actor and I do a great service as a director. So that I've recommitted to those as being my top priorities. And in that process, I get to help you, right? So in the process of me being a great actor and me being a great director, then I get to help you uh, reach your vision. So what is your vision? 
Be bold with this. This is one of my favorite quotes. Grow to the same stature as the greatness which transcends all measure. Leap forth from every body, transcend all time, become eternity, and thus you will understand God. So I love this because it is bold, it is big, it is epic. And if you are religious at all, um, then we know that it is said that we are created in God's image. My belief in that is that I agree. And that now before you get all crazy with like uh, religion and, and God and, and whatever, while I agree with that, I believe that we were created in order to create, right? So, so if I was created and I have a purpose, that truth, going back to that truth, then that purpose is my driving force in this world. If I stray from that truth, if I stray from my purpose, then I get depressed, I get distracted, I get disoriented, I get, you know, I, 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 I'm not fully and effectively 100%. So this is a bold way of being. Explore similar boldness in your vision and your quest for greatness. Uh, grow to the same stature as the greatness which transcends all measure. What is your big picture life? Um, what is your big picture for big life? And be bold with that. Uh, create a, a statement, a vision statement that is going to uh, lead you through all the good and bad times. What is your five-year plan? What is your three-year plan? And what is your one-year plan? Now, I like to have the big vision for my five years. Where do I want to be in five years? And then where do I want to be in three years? And then right now it's really, um, cause I'm living so much of my dream right now. Um, because of this process, quite honestly, guys, it is because of this process that I have been able to live the dream that I, that I, that I, um, that I, that the life that I'm living. And then every year I go down to, um, the one year and I set forth, what are my plans for this year? What are, what is the vision that I want to create for this year? And going back to this, I use all of this to create that vision board. Okay. So how do I know that vision boards work? How do I know that vision and imagination work? Well, um, my life experience, um, you know, I, I had on my vision board that I wanted to be a professor at a, at a college. I'm a professor at a college. I teach, uh, I was teaching theater history, acting fundamentals, uh, advanced camera. Um, and then I also uh, had a company and I teach uh, privately. Um, so I get to communicate and, and, and share uh, and, and, give, give, um, and give back to the community that has is, that is allowed me to, to have such an amazing life. Um, and currently, and will continue to have such an amazing life. Um, inside each of these, I can prove to you what my, how my vision board has, has been effective. In my relationship, my, my uh, partner right now uh, is a direct result of my, my vision board um, because I created a vision of how I wanted to be of service to that person, how I wanted to have him feel um, with me, uh, the opportunity to serve and the opportunity to be served by him. What is it that I want in a significant other? What are the elements and the character of the person that I want to spend my life with, right? If that is your choice. Career. I am an actor, I am a teacher, and I'm a director. That is all based on my vision for what I want to create in the world. Environment. The environment that I have right now. Um, it is a small version of my big epic dream. We have a big yard, um, I do have a dog, I have uh, a loving, elevating environment, we have a garden, et cetera. All that was because of my vision board. Education, I read all the time, I'm educating myself all the time, um, and, I'm, uh, and I teach. So, um, health. Uh, you know, I, after the Thanksgiving break, I realized that I get to get back to my health, get back to the gym, get back to taking care of myself. Use, like, using that as my first priority because health is the foundation of all things. In my, my opinion, health and spirituality, education, how are you educating yourself? 
uh, relationships? Are your relationships in your life healthy? Are they inspiring? Are people, do you surround yourself by people not only that you can inspire and elevate, but also people that uh, contribute gratitude for that? And also, do you surround yourself with people that may be at levels above you in your career or industry? And do you allow yourself to be inspired by them or do you allow yourself to be threatened by them? Uh, I challenge you to allow yourself to be inspired by them and be completely honest with how empowering they are and how uh, much you appreciate and are gr grateful for their service. Finances, ooh, that's a big one. That always takes a back seat for me. Um, and uh, I get to address that. I get to consistently address how um, uh, finances. However, when I've made the most money, it's because of my flow. It's because of me being creative. It's not what I'm doing. It is how I'm being, right? So I'm being proactive. I'm being rigorous. I'm being responsible. I'm being all of these things. And that is what creates cash flow for me. Um, spirituality. Uh, again, health and spirituality, the foundation, in my opinion, of all of these things. Uh, what is your spiritual process? So, um, and every morning waking up with gratitude, waking up with, with, um, this, uh, plan of what you want to create in the world. Like, what do you want to create in the world and who do you get to be every day to make that happen? So when you're diving into script, so that was all kind of self-help and that was all kind of, um, to benefit you in terms of how you're showing up in the world. But this one is all about. Uh, the process, the acting process, taking you as a character and paralleling that to character development in the script. So how does this apply to acting? So who am I? Who is your character? Where are they from? You create a character bio from when that person was born all the way up until their present circumstances and do it all from the I point of view. I was born in Dallas, Texas. I was born to loving parents. I was, um, or, or, or whatever that circumstance is that creates that character. Some of that stuff is gonna be in the script and some of it's just not gonna be in the script and you get to create that. As long as it doesn't contradict the script, contradict the story that you're telling, you get to fill in all of those blanks because a character has a full life behind it. Even if it's a supporting role, even if it's five lines, even if it's a few lines, um, you wanna create that character backstory. Now. You might not be in a place where you're getting leading roles in features or leading roles in um, a series right now, and you might be getting supporter, supportive roles. Even if you're playing background, you can utilize this experience to create your own characters. You can utilize that experience to develop who you are and who you are showing up in the world. I, 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 did a, I directed a show uh, this past fall called Does a Tiger Wear a Necktie? Extraordinary experience. And I had a few actors that just had a couple of lines but their on set presence as the characters, the backstory, what they had going on was so captivating and so thrilling to watch because they had fully flushed out specific characters that they had developed. Um, and it was, it, was a, it was a director's, they were a director's dream come true. What are my present circumstances? These are all your environment, your health, everything that we were talking about back here with these elements. What is your present circumstances of your environment? What is your education level? What is your status? What is your social status? Are you white collar, blue collar? What do you do for work? Uh, what is your spirituality? Are you religious? Are you not religious? Who is your significant, significant other? What are you trying to attain or maintain in your relationship as the character? Um, what are your career? What is your career path? Who are you? What do you wanna be as the character? What are your finances? Are you wealthy? Are you poor? Are you struggling to attain or maintain something uh, in terms of the world of finances? What is your health? What are your present circumstances in terms of your health? And what are your relationships? Relationships are everything, okay? What are your relationships? Who are your relationships? Relationships to other people and, other, um, and your environment and relationships to objects, okay? So you want to create a character bio. So choose a script, find the script. You can go to script slug. You can go to a bookstore. I recommend finding a script that is not familiar to you or you haven't seen the film in a long time or seen the play. 
Um, and I want you to dive, I want you to pick that script and I want you to pick a character that might be a stretch for you, might be a challenge for you. And I want you to read the script and we're gonna get to that in a second. Um, uh, who is my other in the script? Who is my other in the scene? What are you trying to do? What are strategies are you doing to create? What do you want, okay? So the other question that I don't have here is what do you need? What does your character need? What is it that they are trying to get from, from the other? Uh, what strategies do I use to get what I want? These are tactics, right? Um, we have our overall script objective, what do we need? And then we have our scene objective and then we have our moment to moment objectives, right? What are my relationships? People, environment, objects. What are my relationships with the people? What are the relationships with my environment? What are the relationships with objects, et cetera? And then when you get to the scene, you've chosen the scene, you want to explore your goal for the scene, what are the obstacles, and then tactics, and what are your expectations? Expectations save me every time. They get me out of my head, and uh, you want to uh, create very specific expectations. What is a tangible outcome of that scene that you're going to be able to um, uh, get from your other that is going to give you what you need. Set those expectations, be really specific with them, and raise the stakes, all right? So this is just a brief overview. Um, if you have other questions, feel free to uh, ask those down at the bottom of the, uh, of, the, of the YouTube feed. If you want to do one-on-one -on -one private sessions with me, you can reach out to me, absolutely, davisbrion at gmail.com. You can also uh, stay alert because I'm going to be putting out a four to six part series on these specificities, just the specificities of creating a character. We're gonna be talking about um, the, the uh, given circumstances. We're gonna be talking about uh, how to create a character, how to live inside the world of the script. Um, so, so keep an eye out. I'm gonna be putting together that series uh, very soon as we speak. And um, if you're not in Los Angeles or in a place that's, that, that has access to a, a really great class, this is going to be the, the thing for you. Okay. It's an online uh, series that you can purchase that will take you from step one all the way through final production. All right. So keep an eye out for that. This is what I'd like for you to do. Um, if you are either just getting started or you're intermediate in, in the work that you're doing as an actor, or if you are an actor that actually has a script that you've been hired to do, um, this is for you, right? So pick a script. You can uh, get a script that is um, something that you haven't seen in a while, like I said earlier, something that you're not too familiar with. The character, ask these of your character. Does the character challenge you? Um, if you're kind of a veteran, does the character stretch you beyond what you might get cast as? And that's great because when you dive into characters that are beyond your castability as they are as you are now, you're going to learn and grow and stretch. You're going to learn so much about yourself because you're stretching beyond your own personal perspective as it exists now. For example, I played um, Adolf Eichmann in a play in, in New York, um, an off-Broadway production, um, which was a great uh, small venue in New York. And Adolf Eichmann pretty much can't be further from my moral compass um, than any other character. Uh, the character that I played in Castle Rock, pretty far from my moral compass. However, um, I was able to find similarities. I was able to find similarities based on the human condition and what we all basically need in our lives. So pick a script. Does the character challenge you? Does the character stretch you? Does the script, does the material, the dialogue stretch you? Does it challenge you? Or are you looking for something that's a little bit more within your wheelhouse so that you can really fine tune that and be ready to go in for those auditions? Something that's a little bit more accessible to who you are, right? Um, pick a, a script that, that is within that world and then 
um, and then begin to dive in, begin to dive in with all of those steps, creating the character bio, the given circumstances, the relationships, et cetera, um, and utilize this as your experience from this point forward. Um, then you wanna read the script. You wanna read the script from three perspectives. The audience point of view, which is what you're left with. There's no judgment moving through the script. There's no, uh, there's no uh, perspective from a singular point of view. It's just what the audience is left with because at the end of the day, we do this for the benefit of the audience, okay? We have to remind ourselves that we are of service to the audience. So what is the audience left with? Are they challenged? Are they spiritually challenged? Are they um, uh, empowered, right? What is it that the audience is left with? Then you wanna read it from the director's point of view. Um, Scorsese directs very different than John Cameron Mitchell, right? So these are, these are a variety of different directors um, and all of them have their own um, signature, if you will. Right. And then uh, character point of view. The character point of view is when you really begin to dive in. Now, the director's point of view and character point of view begin to overlap in those two reads. I'm not saying you only read the script three times. You could end up reading the script 20 times or if you're like Jack Nicholson, you read it 100 times. Um, so you could read the script many, many, many different times. I know with Embrace the Serpent, I probably read it well over 100 times. So. Um, to find scripts, you can go to used bookstores for plays, uh, for some film scripts. You can look online. Uh, one of my favorite platforms is Script Slug online. Um, and then you can go to pretty much any bookstore for, you know, more commercial plays. Uh, anything by Tennessee Williams or Shakespeare, um, August Wilson, uh, those major playwrights are definitely going to be at your Barnes & Noble. However, um, order online, find a writer that captivates you, right? Find a writer like Tennessee Williams. That's, that's the writer for me and Sam Shepard. Those are my two favorite writers. So find a writer that just, that speaks to you and allow yourself to get obsessed about it. Obsession is a good thing. I promise. Now, obviously you want to keep balance, but so these are your next steps. So create a character bio with that script. Answer all the questions in the Uta Hagen Six Steps, which you can find easily online. Get her book, uh, Challenge for the Actor. Those six steps are in there. Pick a scene and start developing the character. Start developing the character with the steps that I gave you. Um, give yourself a mock audition um, and, and start practicing the audition process. Uh, you can connect with me, again, davisbrion at gmail.com. And then... Um, next week, we're going to be diving deeper into character, deeper into awareness of self, uh, difference between myself and the character, and then similarities between myself and the character. And then later, we're going to talk about relaxation. We're going to go into audition practices, etc. So here are my recommended books for you to start off with. Acting books, Uta Hagen's Challenge for the Actor and Tony Barr, Acting for the Camera. Leadership book. Uh, I had the great benefit of working with Michael Strasner um, in a leadership training at the Hardcore Leadership this past summer, and it was phenomenal. Um, and Michael Strasner is just a really incredible guy, mastering leadership. He was one of my teachers. Um, and he has a book called uh, Drift the Shift, uh, Shift the Drift and Ch Change the World. Don Miguel Ruiz uh, and the Four Agreements. That's a great one to remind yourself of. If you haven't read that one or haven't read it in a while, highly recommend. So those are some of my books this week that I recommend for the actor. And, you know, uh, it is my goal that this entire series is beneficial, not only for the artists, but also um, for leaders in the entire um, industry, the entertainment industry. So um, keep that in mind. and. Again, if you have questions, uh, please ask those below. So here are a couple of random questions. Dun, dun, dun. I don't have a, a soundtrack yet, but I will. Uh, and I'm going to be answering some random questions that I find online uh, through actors' resources. Um, the actors that I've copied these questions from do not know that, that I've copied these questions. Uh, and therefore, I'm not putting their name on here because I don't have uh, they're okay. So, 
Um, but I like to do this. I like to go in and answer questions for actors um, out there. Um, and the other questions I'm going to be answering are not just actor questions, actor related questions. They're going to be humanistic questions. So here's some random questions that I'm going to answer. I am about to sign with an agency, but they're asking for a $40 monthly fee for casting ops, headshots, comp cards, et cetera. I've heard of website fees, but even that's a yearly cost. Anyone else ever encountered this? Absolutely not. So you never pay up front for anything. You're gonna pay your manager a 15, commission 15 percent commission generally your manager either a 15 or 10 percent commission you're going to pay your agent a 10 percent commission on the work that they get you and if it's non-union work then yeah you're going to end up paying about 20 percent so never upfront costs ever the upfront costs for you are an acting class to master your craft are um, the upfront costs for you are to create content and material for yourself. The upfront costs for you are Actors Access, LA Casting. The upfront costs to you are your gym membership. You are creating a product, right? Another question. If I'm a beginner in acting, meaning I have no experience but have training, should I move straight to LA or just to a bigger city in Texas like Austin to build up my resume, then try and make the move to LA. Where I am at the, at where I'm at, sorry, I just copy pasted these. Where I am at has very few opportunities for jobs and most here do it as a hobby, not professionally and not really any acting classes, which I'm gonna do online for the meantime. So what are y'all's thoughts on this? So this is what I did. So I had a dream to move to New York. I moved to New York right after college. I spent all my time in theater in college and I, I moved to Austin for a split second and then I moved to New York to get my training. I moved to New York and I studied at the HB Actor Studio for three years to get my training, to get my foundation as an actor and that was all I did was study, 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 study. I think toward the end of that tenure or the end of that part of time, I ended up going, uh, booking a, a, a play. Uh, toward the end of that first time in, in New York. And then I, right before 9-11, I ended up moving back to Austin, getting my feet wet in the film industry, building up those relationships, taking acting classes there. And uh, I started working. I started working, I got a few commercials, I got a feature film, I did a play. And um, then I, I, I just started working and then the right time came for me to move to Los Angeles, which is uh, where I came. And then I created my own one man show. I created my own one man show in Los Angeles. I developed a team of people. Um, um, I developed a, a, an environment and a, and a network of, of, of players. Uh, and I ended up getting the show produced here in Los Angeles. That show ended up going to New York and playing at a film at a, um, a theater festival in New York, and so I moved back to New York for three years, and then it kept getting cold, so I moved back to Los Angeles. So my answer to that question is study right now, wherever you go. Yes, move to Austin, take acting classes. Um, there's a Bright Light Studio there. I think uh, Mona Lee is uh, amazing. There's quite a few since I've left. There's quite a few classes um, and a structure in Austin for you to really get your feet wet. And then at some point, yeah, decide to move to LA. But when you move to LA, or if you move to New York, or even if you move to Atlanta or New Orleans, what you want to do is you want to first priority is to get into an acting class. Begin to create your community because it's very easy to get lost in the shuffle um, of trying to make, you know, make money. Um, and then I can answer more of these questions, but in, in terms of the steps to take, and maybe I'll do that in another sh show. But yeah, you want to um, uh, live life. That's the answer to that question, live life. If you want to move to one of the bigger cities, then do it, absolutely. And then just live below your means, get a job that's structured, secure, and versatile, that, that works with your schedule, that you can manipulate and get into an acting class. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, so I'll answer your questions. 
you can subscribe to me on my Facebook pro page, which is Breon Davis, actor, director, or on Instagram at Breon Davis. Um, I'll have an online course coming out where I go into even further details with all of these items. So you can email me at davisbreon at gmail.com. I'm going to leave you with this. What do you want to create in the world? What are you committed to creating in the world? Who do you get to be right now, today, to create that, right? Who do you get to be? So that's that. This is the first of the series. Please connect with me and let's begin to create my vision in the world, which is unity.